23.3 nominal and real value. In this chapter, we study dollar and cents at different dates, nominal and real values in macroeconomics, nominal GDP and real GDP, nominal wage rate and real wage rate, nominal interest rate and real interest rate. In 2013, it cost 46 cents to mail a first class letter. 100 years earlier in 1913, that same letter would have cost 2 cents to mail. Does it really cost you 23 times the amount it cost your great-great-grandmother to mail a letter? The CPI can be used to answer questions like these. In fact, that is one of the main reasons for constructing a price index. Let's see how we can compare the price of a stamp in 1913 and price of a stamp in 2013. Dollar and cents at different dates. To compare dollar amount at different dates, we need to know the CPI at those days. Currently, the CPI has been of 100 for uh, 1982-84, that is the average of the CPI is 1982 1984 is 100. In 2013, the CPI was 2332.1 and in 1913 it was 9.9. .9. By using these two numbers, we can calculate the relative value of the dollar in 1913 and 2013. To do so, we derive the 2013 CPI by the 1913 CPI. That ratio is 232.1 over 9.9 .9 equals 23.4. That is, prices on average were 23.4 times higher in 2013 than in 1913. We can use this ratio to convert the price of a 2 cent stamp in 1913 into its 2013 equivalent. The formula for this calculation is price of stamp in 2013 dollars equals price of stamp in 1913 dollars times cpi in 2013 over cpi in 1913 equals 2 cents times 232.1 over 9.9 .9 equals 46.9 cents so your great great grandmother paid a bit more than you pay it really cost her almost one cent more to mail the first class letter than it cost you in 2013 she paid the equivalent of 46.9 cents in 2013 money and you paid 46 cents. We have just converted the 1913 price of a stamp to its 2013 equivalent. We can do a similar calculation the other way around, converting the 2013 price to its 1913 equivalent. The formula for this alternative calculation is price of stamp in 1913 dollars equals price of stamp in 2013 dollars into CPI in 1913 over CPI in 2013 equals 46 cents times 9.9 .9 over 232.1 equals 1.96 cents. The interpretation of this number is that you pay the equivalent of 1.96 cents in 1913 dollars. Your real price of a stamp is 1.96 cents expressed in 1913 dollars. The calculations that we have just done are examples of converting a nominal value into a real value. A nominal value is one that is expressed in the current dollars. A real value is one that is expressed in the dollars of a given year. Nominal and real values in mac macroeconomics. Three nominal and real variables occupy a central position in macroeconomics. They are nominal GDP and real GDP, the nominal wage rate and the real wage rate, the nominal interest rate and the real interest rate. Nominal GDP and real GDP. When we calculated the 1913 value of a 46 cent 2000 cent 2013 to the CPI in 2013, by this calculation we found the real value of a 2013 stamp in 1913 dollars. When we calculate the real GDP of 2013 in 2009 dollars, we express the values the goods and services produced in 2013 in terms of the prices that prevailed in 2009. We calculated real GDP directly. We didn't multiply nominal GDP in 2013 by the ratio of a price index in the two years. But when we interpret real GDP in 2013 as nominal GDP in 2013 multiplied by the ratio of the GDP price index in 2009 to the GDP price index in 2013, the GDP price index in 2009, the base year, is defined to be 100. So you can interpret real GDP in any year as nominal GDP divided by the GDP price index in that year multiplied by 100. We don't calculate real GDP this way but we can interpret this way. 
The GDP price index or the CPI or some other price index might be used to convert a nominal variable to a real variable. Nominal wage rate and real wage rate. The price of labor services is the wage rate, the income that an hour of labor earns. In macroeconomics, we are interested in economy-wide performance, so we can focus on the average hourly wage rate. The nominal wage rate is the average hourly wage rate measured in current dollars. The real wage rate is the average hourly wage rate measured in the dollars of a given reference base year. To calculate the real wage rate relevant to a summer, as consumer, we divide the nominal wage rate by the CPI and multiply by 100. That is, real wage rate in 2013 equals nominal wage rate in 2013 over CPI in 2013 times 100. In 2013, the nominal wage rate, that is average hourly wage rate of production workers was $1.2010 and the CPI was 232.1. So, the real wage rate in 2013 equals $20.10 over 232.1 into 100 is equal to $8.66. Because we measure the real wage rate in constant base period dollars, a change in the real wage rate measures a change in the quantity of goods and services that an hour's work can buy. In contrast, a change in the nominal wage rate measures a combination of a change in the price level. So the real wage rate removes the effects of inflation from a changes in the nominal wage rate. The real wage rate is a significant variable because it measures the real reward for labor, which is a major determinant of the standard of living. The real wage rate is also significant because it measures the real cost of labor services, which influences the quantity of labor that firms are willing to hire. Figure shows what hap has happened to the nominal wage rate and the real wage rate in the United States between 1980 and 2013. The nominal wage rate is the average hourly earnings of production workers. The nominal wage rate barely changed as the nominal wage rate increased because the nominal wage rate grew at a rate almost equal to the inflation rate. When the effects of inflation are removed from the nominal wage rate, we can see what is happening to the buying power of the average wage rate. In the figure, the real wage rate has fluctuated a little. It decreased slightly until the mid-90s when after which it increased slightly. Nominal interest rate and real interest rate. Converting a nominal interest rate to a real interest rate is a bit different. A nominal interest rate is a dollar amount of interest expressed as a percentage of the amount loaned. For example, suppose that you have dollar thousand in a bank deposit, a loan by you to a bank on which you receive interest of dollar fifty a year. The nominal interest rate is dollar fifty as a percentage of dollar thousand, which is five percent a year. The real interest rate is the goods and services foregone in interest expressed as a percentage of amount loaned. Continuing with the above example, at the end of one year, your bank deposits has increased to thousand fifty, the original thousand plus dollar fifty interest. Suppose the price have increased by three percent, so now you need thousand thirty to buy what thousand would have bought a year earlier. The actual interest rate you received is dollar twenty, or a real interest rate is two percent a year. Real interest rate is calculated by the formula real interest rate equals nominal interest rate minus inflation rate. The real interest rate is 5% minus 3% equals 2% a year. Figure shows the nominal and the real interest rate in the United States between 1972 and 2012. When the inflation rate is high, the gap between the real interest rate and nominal interest rate is large. Sometimes the real interest rate is negative as it was in the mid-1970s and the lender pays the borrower.